Dr. Kumalo, they're speaking at the funeral of the late Clive Barker. Now, the Gauteng Education Department's online registration system for grade one and grade eight for 2024 is now live. There have been issues with system crashes and parents being unable to log in in recent years. So how has day one gone or how is it still going? Let's check in with the department if everything is going smoothly so far. The MEC of Gauteng Education, uh, Chilwane Matume, Matume Chilwane rather, is joining me now uh, just to give us an update. MEC, good afternoon. Welcome to today and thank you very much uh, for your time this afternoon. Just an overriding question first. How are things going so far? Uh, so far, things are, thank you, uh, uh, Pradhan, thank you so much uh, for the opportunity. Uh, we, so far, so good. Uh, there's not, this, this year, officially, we can announce that there was no glitches at all uh, since the system went live at 8 o'clock up until now. Uh, we are sitting with more than 160,000 applications thus far. Obviously, I'm sure the number will increase overnight as parents get home and they're able to, 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 to <clears throat> apply for their children. So, so the system has been very good. I think this year, we, we, or the changes that we've made and the improvements that we've made has really bad fruit. Uh, we, we are quite happy with uh, today. Are you confident that when the numbers pick up, as you say, maybe later tonight or in the days ahead, the system will cope with the influx? The most difficult time is the first four hours. Uh, that's why we have the most number uh, on the system. And we, we went through very seamlessly. And, and really, we must, I must also send my appreciation to the Home Affairs. They allowed us to use their system for four hours uninterrupted. Uh, that's allowed parents to, when, while they're on the system applying, they're able to pull out their data immediately in seconds. Uh, so, the, so we're happy about that, and hence, if we've gone the first four hours, we don't anticipate any problems going forward. Okay, I understand you were on the ground in Winterfield in Tswane to assist parents who have no access to the internet. How was that experience? Yeah, no, of course. Uh, look, the, the much more work needs to be done, especially in our township areas, because most of those schools there, parents have not gone out. Uh, uh, we, we need to continually uh, engage parents and, and, and inform them that, look, the system is open, come in up and, and, and apply for your child. But we received well. Uh, the numbers increased to, to later on in the day. It started a bit slow, but it's in, increasing gradually. I think as the days progress and more awareness and campaign takes place, more parents will go in. And apply, especially for the township areas. That's where we are having most uh, least numbers of applications uh, at the moment. Okay, so so it's open from today. For how long will it remain open? Or put another way, when are you closing the applications? Uh, we intend to close on the 14th of July, uh, midnight. Uh, that's 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 the target that we've, we've set. For, for all our parents, uh, but it's actually exactly 30 days. So it's a month where they'll be able to. Apply. So that's why we're urging parents to apply because um, we don't want to be dealing with late applications. Uh, and then that's where we have most problems uh, with late applications. And those late applications are much later on in December. And, and the, 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 the issue with late applications, you don't get to choose the school. Uh, you bring us your child to place the child. We just offer you a place, and it can be anywhere, you know, and that's the problem. But when we apply now, we are able to plan accordingly so that we can fit your child it, at your preferred school. Uh, yeah. Because that's now, always that's always a yeah. problem. Come January, parents go to a school and they say, I applied, but uh, they didn't realize that uh, maybe their second or third choice uh, is the one where they've gone mm. to. Well, well, we'll touch base uh, before, before the end of the application period in July. But I just want to move on to another question while I have you here, MEC, and it's based on your response to a question that was asked in the legislature in the Gauteng 
by the DA MP, MPL, Kume uh, Ramuli for the DA Gauteng Shadow MEC, about the number of schools that you've closed down in, in, um, in Gauteng. About 11 of them in the past five years have been closed down, and only three of them, I understand, according to your response, were converted into public special schools, but the other, the remainder of them have been deserted. Why? I mean, there's eight schools. While you've got pressure of um, overcrowding, for example, you need the infrastructure. Why not using it? Yeah, the, the problem is, um, obviously, the schools that we've closed is because of population movement. Um, the, the, the learner enrollment is too little for us to continue uh, having that school, then it, it, the cost of the cost benefit analysis. That's why we've gotten to a point where we close some schools. And and true, some schools we, we are looking to repurpose them, as as the answer was that we repurpose some into special schools, and we do have those that uh, are currently occupied. And 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 there's one, for instance, where we want to go back and 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 and. and and refurbish it so that we can reopen it again. But it's been occupied by illegal occupants uh, in the school who are having problem moving them out. So we do have that challenge. But generally, it's because of movement and learner yeah. enrollment. For in our case, learner enrollment, but uh, but migration, movement of uh, of of the population. Uh, there's no point keeping a school in a rural yeah. area when there's no one. We have ten learners there. So, so, so are, are, are you is. saying the schools you've closed were in areas where there's no longer a need for because the population numbers have gone down? Yes, predominantly is learner enrollment. In our case, the, the determination, determination factor is learner enrollment. If we've got very little, uh, of course we try uh, to sustain them over a period of time. We don't just say this year you've got less learners, therefore we close. We try for a number of years by uh, okay. whether uh, providing pushing learners into the school and providing learner transport, migrating learners into that school. But over time, when you see that it's not becoming sustainable and we have alternatives, then we, we go into that process. But it's a lengthy process. Yeah. It's not an overnight process. But the, the, the question uh, is, the question might... yeah, the, the question I'm asking this is because you, you've got overcrowding, you've got a shortage of schools and you've got plans as, as housing, education, to build more schools and, and align them to the needs, the new needs of the, of the fourth industrial revolution and all those good things. But you're going to be spending more money and you, you've mentioned the issue of cost. So how are you recouping? Uh, I know the schools will be built by public works, but how are you going to be recouping some of that investment? Because those schools were standing. Yeah, um, that's why we're looking to repurpose them uh, into... We are having engagement with uh, some colleges, uh, TVET colleges, uh, that perhaps we can look into repurposing them into community colleges for, for, for youth development purposes. So we are looking at many alternatives to utilize that infrastructure and not let it to go to waste, as in some instances we, 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 the schools are vacant, uh, truthfully. But now, in this case, uh, for us, it's all about enrollment and 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 the set the sad part is that uh, parents prefer schools that are closer to where they live and also ex model c schools and that's what that's where we find ourselves i mean for instance okay. there's a area in the area in uh, in in heidelberg uh, the pop the population is less you know and the learner enrollment has become far less. And over a period of time, we'll eventually get to a point where we'll have to then uh, find alternative schooling for the learners okay. that are there in that school and look to repurpose but, that infrastructure. It's, it, it's, it's what's been happening throughout the province. Okay, so that infrastructure will be repurposed. Thank you very much for your time uh, this afternoon. That's uh, Matume Chilwane, the MEC for Education, just giving us an update on how the online registration for grades 1 and 8 for 2024 has been going. More than 160,000 applications today, up to now, and everything has gone smoothly. The first four hours are the most critical ones, and there's been no glitches so far. And of course, the, the application online will close in July.